Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. We'll be going from the dates of the 23rd of October up until the 29th and as always we'll look at any games that we may have missed off a previous week's video first before moving on to the games coming out this week. There are a few horror based releases this week as you would expect with Halloween just around the corner so what is coming? Well, let's find out. First to a couple of games that are already out then as I said and the first is Raiden 4 the Mikado Remix. This actually came out in North America a while back and is now out in other regions. Raiden 4 originally came out in 2007 in arcades in Japan and released on the Xbox 360 a year later. This particular version comes complete with remixed music by various artists from the Mikado Game Center and I actually imported the physical version of this a couple of months back from America as it was actually cheaper to do that than to pay the pre-order price for the PAL version which is crazy. A great game and it joins Raiden 5 which is also on the Switch. And then there is Skull the Hero Slayer. The blurb, quite possibly the shortest one I've ever read, states that you guide Skull on his quest to single-handedly take on the Imperial Army and rescue his king from captivity in an action-packed roguelite platformer for the ages. That is the whole blurb. Watching the trailer, it reveals a nice pixel art style and what looks to be an interesting mechanic where you replace your head to change your skill set, a bit like Kid Chameleon on the Mega Drive I think it was, wasn't it? Maybe they should have mentioned that in the blurb, but anyway, this one costs £15.29. Looking at the games coming out this week, and as I said with Halloween on the horizon, the first one is a horror game called Shadow Corridor. This sees you chased by the spirits of the cursed No Mask and having to do anything you can to escape. Maps are randomly generated and there are a variety of items to use on each run. I do always find it quite interesting when survival horror games implement random level generation, as long as it's done well of course, as it can evoke that feeling of dread as you realise you have no idea where to go whilst being chased by a deadly assailant. This has been out on Steam for a couple of years and has positive reviews over there from what I saw, and to be fair the trailer has some very creepy moments in. It's going to cost £13.49 or your regional equivalent when it releases on the 26th. Another horror themed game next, this is Hermitage Strange Case Files. This adventure has a visual novel style to it and revolves around the Hermitage bookstore which attracts some very unusual characters. As the owner of the bookstore you must solve cases by collecting clues and conversing with characters, linking and analysing events and scenarios along the way. It sounds a bit like the Sherlock Holmes games that have released on computers and various consoles over the years but that horror angle sounds really interesting especially as the blurb mentions a set of Lovecraftian style books in the store that may be the cause of the supernatural events. I definitely have my eye on this one, it releases again on the 26th and sells for £17.99. Next is Virtualverse, which describes itself as a cyberpunk point and click adventure. The trailer gives very little away as you are seeing now, but it certainly hits all the visual notes that we would come to expect from any sort of cyberpunk setting. You have your vibrant colours with a strong use of pink and cyan, your characters with implants and augmentations, billboards and flying cars, it's all present and correct, but I must say I love such settings in games even when it does feel a bit by the numbers. The story revolves around a society where everyone is connected to an integrated reality although your character refuses to comply with the system and instead lives off the grid, smuggling modded hardware. He's drawn into a deadly situation when his girlfriend leaves him a cryptic message and then promptly disappears. This one's out on the 28th and will sell for £12.99 or your regional equivalent. Okinawa Rush releases on the 28th and is an action platformer, or it's probably more a beat em up on a 2D plane to be fair, and sees you taking on the role of one of three martial arts masters called Hiro, Mei Lin and Shin, 
fighting for their lives against the Black Mantis clan. It has local co-op and you can fight with a variety of weapons such as swords, nunchucks and bow staffs. I bet Raphael's feeling quite left out right now and there is a demo available on the eShop if you want to give that a try. Now I actually watched a friend of mine, Dave over at Savedex Gaming, play through that demo with his wife in a stream the other night and it actually looks like a really good game with a decent amount of moves and projectiles to use too. I'll stick a link to that stream in the description if you want to give it a watch or you could of course just download the demo for yourselves. I love the look, it really reminds me of Shinobi 3 for the Mega Drive in terms of the backgrounds, although the character sprites are smaller here, and it's going to sell for £17.99. Also on the 28th then you have Gas Guzzlers Extreme, which is a car combat racer, I'm guessing similar to something like Twisted Metal or Carmageddon maybe, but it also includes team or clan battles. It promises a single player campaign that lasts for over 12 hours, 40 tracks, 8 arenas and 7 different environments. There are 18 customizable cars and I actually did a double take when watching the trailer because it briefly flashes between some of the available cars and after the standard looking supercars you would expect, I could have sworn I saw Del Boy's trusty Reliant Regal van, iconic for its free wheel design and the Trotter's independent traders logo on the side. For anyone not from over here or just too young to know what I'm talking about, and those words pain me by the way, watch Only Fools and Horses, it's an absolute staple of British sitcoms and you'll see what I'm talking about. Next we have Project Zero Maiden of Blackwater, which is my most anticipated release of the week and comes via Koi Tecmo. I'm a big fan of the Project Zero series or Fatal Frame as it's known in some regions, and Project Zero 2 is one of the creepiest games I've ever played still to this day. This particular entry in the series released for the Wii U originally and I was lucky enough to grab a physical copy of the game for the Wii U when it came out as they released in limited numbers. It may have even been exclusive to Europe actually in terms of Western releases. Whilst not my favourite entry in the series, I still did very much enjoy it. These games focus on the Camera Obscura, a camera capable of expelling vengeful spirits and this version promises improved screen resolution, updated controls, new outfits and a new snap mode allowing you to place characters to make creative pictures of your own. I'd be interested to see how it controls without the Wii U gamepad, whether it just returns to traditional controls or if there is a gyro option. I guess we'll find out when it releases on the 28th for £32.99. Now a game that was announced at the recent Nintendo Direct, this is Voice of Cards The Isle Dragon Roars from Square Enix. This is an RPG told through the medium of cards and sees you on a quest to slay a dragon. It's presented in the manner of a tabletop game with narration from the game's master to boot and I do always like the tabletop games come to life concept. It will sell for £24.99 or your regional equivalent and it's another game that has a demo available if you want to give it a try. Then you have Mario Party Superstars, the latest in the popular Mario Party series and the second I believe on the Switch after Super Mario Party. This new game has a selection of five boards taken from the Nintendo 64 Mario Party games, remastered and now including online play as well as the traditional local play. I've only ever played a couple of the Mario Party games, despite owning an N64 back in the day these kind of passed me by. My local multiplayer sessions with mates included a roster of games like Mario Kart 64, Turek Rage Wars, FIFA 98, GoldenEye of course, Wave Race, Mace the Dark Age, love that game, and a few others. Is this something that people are happy about? Are the boards included ones you would have chosen? Is five enough? You'll have to let me know, Mario Party experts, in the comments section. On Yoshi's Tropical Island, Toadette's got the star, but she might swap places with Bowser. Surprise! On Peach's birthday cake, plant some piranha plants to gobble up your opponent's coins. And finally for the week, we have a game called Dollhouse, the fourth horror game this week, as you would expect. This describes itself as a film noir horror story, and my interest is immediately piqued and sees you having to delve into the mind of Detective Marie, unraveling secrets from her past. You'll be upgrading your character with 40 plus abilities, creeping through procedurally generated maps and attempting to escape your pursuer in single player. 
It says there is also an online multiplayer mode where each player is given a different target to murder, which does sound very interesting. Another game that's been out a couple of years on Steam, and it seems to have mixed reviews over there, but it releases on the 29th for £26.99. So there you have it, another week of Nintendo Switch releases with a heavy emphasis on horror, which is absolutely fine by me. Do any of these games interest you? Will you be picking any of them up? Please do let us know in the comment section below. Thank you to all of the well wishers. I have not been very well for this last couple of weeks. I've actually been quite ill, to be perfectly honest, but I am feeling much better now, even if my voice doesn't necessarily reflect that. Hopefully I'll be fighting fit for another round of videos next week. Don't forget, if you are looking for eShop cards, we do have a website now where you can pick these up. It's only for the EU region at the minute, but we are looking to extend into other regions soon. There is a link to that in the top pinned comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Happy Halloween, and happy gaming.